as a priest now for going on, I guess, a little over six years. Uh, not, I still know, I obviously still feel like a baby priest many times. But uh, one of the things I think that I was reflecting on in regard to this reading is I think there's something that I've realized in my priesthood that I wasn't expecting um, when I was in the seminary and so forth. And it has to do with uh, today's first reading and also the gospel as well. But in the first reading, we hear um, Solomon, the author of the Book of Wisdom, say, I prayed for prudence, and prudence was given to me. And that thing that I've realized so far in my priesthood is, is how important the virtue of prudence is, and how often it comes up in uh, our daily lives. And I don't think I really recognize that or realize that, um, that I would be, that that virtue plays such an important role. In, in the lives of all of us. And in fact, it's called by the catechism the charioteer of all the other virtues. It brings all the other virtues together and helps us uh, live out our, our life. In, in, in reflecting just a little bit on the virtue of prudence, I want to just talk very briefly about you know, what the church teaches about how we decide on the rightness or wrongness of a particular action that we have. We make millions of decisions um, every day and choose to do and not do lots of things. And the church has kind of a, it breaks down any of those individual decisions into three things, three uh, uh, categories, if you will, or three ways of, um, three things that we have to consider when we're thinking about our actions, and a particular action that we face in our day. And so there's three things. And the first thing that we have to think about is, first of all, the that there are certain acts that are always and everywhere wrong. And so we have this objective quality of an act that sometimes it is just objectively wrong to do. Um, and so we weigh and we look at the act itself and we just say, does that fall into that category of things that are always and everywhere? I just can't, I can't go there. I cannot do that. And we think we know, I don't really want to spend a lot of time uh, you can find lists and you know, we can talk about you know, those things. We have talked about those types of actions elsewhere, right? But today I want to focus on, because I think what's really important is that those things that are always and everywhere wrong are really a very small percentage of the, of the vast spectrum of actions that we can commit or that we are faced with every day. There's a very small percentage of them that are over here that are that, that, that those things that are always and everywhere wrong. And so the other two things that the church talks about with regards to actions come into play much more frequently. You know, it's, it's not like we're sitting around thinking very often, you know, like, you know, should I murder someone? You know, that's not... So, yeah, we have those things that are over here, but again, the vast majority of my day, we're spent wrestling between things that are both good. I face, you know, decisions of, among, how do I choose among these other things over here that are all, none of them are, are wrong or evil per se, but how do I choose among the good? How do I decide what the best thing is among lots of good things? And the, the, the other thing that the church, so we have, some things are always wrong. But again, the other two things that are important are, first of all, the intention that I have. So I can have a really good action, going to Mass on Sunday, helping the poor, praying, whatever it might be. But if my intention is wrong, then I, sh then, then I need to be paying attention to that. That can make an action wrong, even though it's good in itself. So if I come here to Mass just to have people see me, or part of it is, you know, to uh, whatever, uh, to, to, just to be seen, you know, or if I'm praying, but I'm really praying, um, you know, just because I want people to see me praying and that kind of thing, then I need to be paying attention to that. But the final thing, and the, the, the third thing that, that I have to help take into consideration when I'm deciding among these actions is the circumstances. The circumstances that are out there. So it might be that something is good to do in certain circumstances, but maybe, although it's a good act, I shouldn't do it in other circumstances. And that, I think, is the quality or the, the, the part of an action that, that takes most of our discernment, most of our decision making is, is weighing all of the circumstances that come into play. And that's precisely what the gift of prudence is. The gift of the virtue of prudence is the ability to weigh all of the circumstances that are facing me in this particular moment and make a decision. Weighing them all, taking all of them in. And there are literally 
And this is what's so important, and this is, people ask me a lot of times as a priest this question, but like, there are literally an infinite number of variables in any given moment based, that I need to be taking into account, literally an infinite number. And so it's interesting what happens is, and this is why I bring this up as, in, in terms of my own priesthood, I get asked a lot, and I didn't expect this, although maybe you should have, but a lot of people will ask priests, and I, me and I know other priests too, it's, it's, I think it's just kind of one of those things, and it, it's not like it's a bad thing, but people will ask, you know, Father, should I do this thing? You know, and it's not, it's not inherently evil, you know, but again, it's so, you know, I'm trying to think of an example, you know, something like, you know, should I let my daughter go on a date, or, you know, should our family go on a vacation, or, you know, just kind of things, and I end up always saying, I don't know, especially on the daughter and the date thing, I'm like, I don't, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that kind of question, those types of questions, I think, get asked of priests a lot, and the, hopefully the answer, maybe some priests insert themselves in, I don't know, but for me, it's like, I don't know. Because there's only one person that knows all the circumstances that are going into that situation and that decision, and that's you. It would be wrong for me a lot of times to weigh in. It's not like, you know, like, you know, the priests are thought of as, you know, oh, well, this is, you should, anytime you have a decision, you know, go pay a tithe to the priest and, you know, put your money in and he'll give you an answer. You know, it's, it doesn't work that way. And it would be wrong for anybody to say, we can, we can, you know, pray with you, and we can help counsel, or, you know, hey, let's talk through it a little bit, just to have somebody to bounce ideas off of. But the virtue of prudence is a reminder to us that the only person who knows all the circumstances and is able to sort through it all is you. And that's the vast majority of things that we do throughout the day, our decisions. How do I decide among lots of good things? We hear in the gospel a very beautiful passage, right? The guy's like, yeah, I, I don't do any of the evil things. I, I honor my mother. I don't steal. I don't defraud. Okay, and Jesus is like, okay, well, that's great. Then for you, here's what you should be doing. You need to sell everything you have and follow me. Right? And that's, that's a hard message. And so for us, you know, it might be, do I sell everything I have too and follow Jesus? Is that what Jesus is calling me to do? Am I supposed to take my family on a vacation Am I supposed to tithe a little bit, but not everything? Do I, I mean, I have a family, maybe I have a family to care for, something like that, right? I mean, what, what God is calling each individual to do in every moment, in every action, is different, depending on the vast majority of time, depending on the circumstances. And again, the only person who knows that is going to be you. Now, the circumstances and the intention that I have, sometimes people get in, they think that the circumstances can allow me to come over here and do those things that are always and everywhere wrong. And that's not true. The church, we don't believe that. Circumstances and intentions can never make a bad action good. But again, the vast majority of my day is spent not just thinking about, should I do something that's always and everywhere wrong? It's, how do I choose how to spend my time? How do I make the right actions? There's a lot of things that I, I could be doing every day, and there's a lot of things that you could be doing. Do I write a blog post? Do I go help the poor? Do I go knock on people's doors and invite them to church? Do I offer spiritual direction? Do I go bless homes? Do I, you know, all those kinds of things. And you face those same things. The gift of prudence, then, is so important. And this is what's also important to reflect on about prudence. When we talk about virtues... We've been talking a lot with our young people in our high school classes that we've been doing online. The thing about, the thing about any virtue is that it, it's a habit. And so when we talk about prudence, what we mean by that as well, another important thing to think about is that it takes practice. If I'm constantly going and deferring to someone else, hey mom, what should I do in this decision? Father, what should I do in this decision? Hey, my best friend, what should I do? No, use your own muscle. The virtue of prudence is a habit that if you use it, you get better at it. We talk a lot in, you know, habits and habits and sports and athletics. It's, uh, athletics is a lot of time how young people relate to things. And so it's very similar. You learn from your mistakes. There, in, in, in fact, it's a very beautiful practice that the church, a lot of, our, a lot of the, the nuns and a lot of the monks 
right? And priests too, diocesan priests, everybody is encouraged to do what's called at the end of the day, called an examination of conscience. And it's what we do before we go to confession too. But literally some monasteries and convents and so forth, they build in like five minutes or ten minutes at the end of the day, right before everyone heads off to bed or whatever. And they'll, they'll literally spend that time in silence looking back on the day. How did I do? Lord, help show me the things that I didn't do so well. I maybe chose the right thing, but it wasn't the best thing. I did a good action there, but maybe I could have done a better action. Maybe you were calling me to something more. And just looking back over game film of the previous day and learning from mistakes. How did I do? Okay, I should have done better, you know, and all, so on and so forth. Looking back on that, that's how we get better at using the virtue of prudence. But again, so often we don't even recognize that God's empowering us with this gift to make these decisions. And so the gift, the gift of prudence, the virtue of prudence is extremely important, I think, for us as we face a myriad number of good actions. How do I choose the best action that God's calling me to in this moment? And so we pray that we become people who get better and recognize that God's giving us this gift and also that we get better at using it. And that we put it into practice and learn from our mistakes and continue to grow closer to God each day.